one of the more common things we hear, I hear uh, when talking to processors and customers or potential customers uh, is I want to extract THCA. Um, I want to run all of my material and extract super cold extractions. I want to be, uh, the, the base request is I want to extract THCA. Um, and then you later on find out that all of the material, no matter what, is, is later decar- on decarboxylated either during or after winterization, distillation, et cetera. Right. What's the deal with that? Uh, it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> of, yeah, uh, right. Exactly. Uh, no, well, that's what we. That's it's very what common. The, that's and why we're here. It's very common. Yes, it it's, is. It's, it may even be even populations that have that understanding versus. I agree with you. What we understand yeah. about it. So it's not like we're saying, "Hey, those guys are right or wrong." We're not saying we are right or wrong, but. Um, when you later on find out uh, that all of the destination goes through a decarboxylation step, uh, so we're no longer talking THCA, um, it, it, it begs the question why, uh, and I should clarify a little more, a lot of the, the even populations I just mentioned have the understanding that it is a superior method to uh, decarb only after the extraction has been done. And it is a common, uh, something we would recommend to maximize efficiency in the extraction process right. to decarb prior to extraction. Right. So, uh, yeah, just wanted to. Yeah, the, like the pre and post decarb. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people look at the biomass and they're like, oh, well, how do I handle all that biomass? Are you, are you asking me to decarb all that? Yeah. You know? And there are easy ways to do that. Mm-hmm. We can we can put you through to some good techniques there and good equipment to mm-hmm. do that in an easy sort of way where you have a balanced view of that. But uh, but then doing it afterward, you're cooking the living daylights out of it. And how's that? How's that good? So literally, you take the oil that you get and then they're cooking it up to in a stirred reactor to 100 degrees Celsius plus, so more mm-hmm. like 120 degrees Celsius plus, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just cooking there for hours and or an hour, two hours, right? At that temperature, you're breaking everything down. You're baking it. You're baking it. You're baking it. Have you ever stepped into a laboratory that's doing that without good ventilation? I mean, it's a little smoky in there. <laughs> yeah, just kind of wonder. If you, if you leave uh, without choking, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, so that is uh, that is a thing. And, and I would say that... A majority of the oils that people consume, I would say, go through that process. In fact, post right? yeah, they're just it's breaking everything yeah. down into just like nothing. All kinds of side products. You don't really nothing's controlled. Uh, you don't really know what you're getting. And that's why some people are getting they get allergies from mm. different things. You don't know what's being. It's not controlled. You don't have a good dosage form. Mm-hmm. You don't know what's in it. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. what are all those peaks? Well, we don't know. We don't measure them. That's the wonderful thing. Also, like these guys who fluorinated or perchlorinated solvents, which are they, <laughs> they use them for extractions. Okay. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's horrible, horrible Yeah, because you can't measure the byproducts. Okay. So you can't measure the residuals because they're fluorinated, right. Or you fluorinated. Measure, you can't measure you can't it. Measure, it's not, it's there. not there. Right. <laughs> It's not there, right? Exactly. So it's yeah. kind of a kind of a crazy thing. Anyway, so that's that's it. I mean, 